Okay, what's up everybody? Thanks for checking into my YouTube channel. Pastor Matt here, uh, Pastor of Gospel Fellowship PCA, just north of Pittsburgh. If you're looking for a Reformed church, come check us out. So one of the questions I get all the time is, what is the best systematic theology? that I should get. I get that question from time to time, so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to look at several options for you of systematic theologies. So without further ado, uh, and this video might be a little bit long, let's go to the bookshelf and see what we have here today. All right. Um, this first one was once my favorite, but is no longer so. In fact, at one point, this was my desert island book, the one book I would take with me to a desert island. It's slipped far down the list for me by now, but this would be Wayne Grudem's uh, one-volume book, Systematic Theology. I got this book while I was a Bible student at Malone University. Then it was called Malone College, and it was the first systematic theology I ever got, ever read. Didn't even know there was such a thing. And it just blew my mind open. I loved it. I did not realize that the Bible could be studied in systems or categories of thought. So, for instance, on God, on man, Christ, redemption, uh, angels and demons, all those wonderful categories. And Grudem, for me, was, he was just my first experience with systematic theology. So I loved it. I loved the Bible references. I loved the scripture memory questions he had. I loved the references to other systematic theologies. And this, for me, was a great book. I learned so much from it. However, um, as I studied it, I began to realize that I agreed with Grudem on quite a few things, but differed from him on a couple of others. For instance, on baptism, I moved towards a pedo baptism On charismatic gifts, I realized that I was less spectacular <laughs> than, uh, than he was. He's sort of an evangelical, eh, quasi-charismatic um, on a few other things, I just didn't quite line up with him. And then Grudem kind of got into some controversies, and I sort of moved away from that. So after Grudem, then I went straight to the extreme. So let's go back to the shelf. And my next systematic theology that I got, actually this is the first copy I have of it. It's all duct taped, and uh, it's pretty well worn. You probably can't even tell what book this is from the cover, but here's my second volume of this. This is John Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion. Now, if you want to really, really dive deep into the Christian faith, you cannot get much deeper than the Institutes. It was, for the longest time, the systematic theology for Reformed Protestantism. And if you say to yourself, well, that's too deep for me. I don't know if I could get into Calvin. Let me just tell you very briefly of a testimony of a good Christian friend. He's a pastor today, but back then he was a, a he was a prisoner. He was a convict and a felon, and he got saved in prison. And when he got out of prison, fell into the right <laughs> the right group of people, and they handed him Calvin's Institutes. It was literally one of the first books he read out of prison, and it just changed his changed his life for the good. So you can read John Calvin's Institutes. I know you can. You could do what I did. I read one page a day for a couple of years and finished it that way. So you can read systematic theology that way. All right, let's go back to the shelf. Let's see what else we have. Now, this today might be my recommendation for a great one-volume systematic. Okay, this one's got everything you're going to need. It's got tons of biblical references. Uh, let me just tell you what it is. This is this is Lewis Burkhoff's systematic theology. Looks similar to uh, to our buddy Grudem, right? Uh, in fact, they are quite similar in a number of ways. Although what I like better about Burkhoff is he does give the standard line reformed position on most things in ways that I think is better than Wayne Grudem, who's a little bit more towards the charismatic evangelicalism. Anyway, that's one of the reasons I pulled back more towards a historic reformed theology like Lewis Burkhoff. Um, if you've heard of Hermann Bavink, who is a great Dutch theologian, Burkhoff is kind of like a, a reduction, a, a little bit of a simplification, and certainly a, a easier, more approachable systematic than Bavink, although Burkhoff in a lot of ways is very parallel to Bavink and what he believes. So if you're looking for, if you're, if you're a, a conservative, Presbyterian, or Reformed Christian, uh, Pado baptistic etc., then you're probably going to want to get Lewis Burkhoff. This is really, this is 
this is great right here. Now, let's meet, let's move beyond single volumes and go into a couple of multi-volume sets. All right, so one of them right here, this would be Charles Hodge's three-volume set. Charles Hodge was the great uh, Princeton theologian in his time, and that volume, those three volumes were the classic three-volume systematic that many of the Princeton theologians were trained upon. Totally orthodox, totally consistent, very conservative form of Calvinistic Protestantism there. Um, here's another one. We're hopping up and down a lot today in the video. This is Gerhardus Voss's Reform Dogmatics. Now there's actually five volumes, but I only have two right here in my hands. One of the things that's interesting about this one and that kind of sets it apart from the others is that they're actually more presented in outline form. Um, whereas most of them are a true read, you know, you're reading chapters and, and sections and longer, longer, uh, uh, longer form writing, Voss is more paragraph oriented and more outline form. In fact, some of his points are just uh, single sentences followed by scripture. So it, this actually is pretty interesting to read. You can read it very readable, but also you could probably teach almost straight out of this uh, without having to cipher through it to filter out the good stuff. So that'd be another way to go. The, the one I wanted to mention too, which I don't happen to have on my shelf because it's at home, would be John Frame's Systematic Theology, which is a big, huge one volume text. I wish I could show it to you. I might've talked about it before in a different video. But of course, I, I'm sympathetic to Frame in a lot of ways. He was my professor at Reformed Theological Seminary in Orlando, so of course I'm going to incline that way. But one of the things I like about Frame is he's just so readable. Of all the systematic theologies, John Frame talks to you as a fellow believer. A lot of personal pronouns, I believe, we believe, together we, etc. And there's a great amount of humility in John Frame's writings too where sometimes you'll come up to a topic and maybe Frame himself isn't even exactly sure. So he'll say like, uh, some people think A, some people think B. Personally, I think it might be C for the following reasons, uh, but he's very charitable in most of what he says. Now he's gotten into a lot of controversies too in his day. And if you're interested in some of the controversies that he's waded through, read his short article, Machen's Warrior Children, which is an excellent, very short article. It's not a systematic theology, but it is but it is interesting in that he talks about a lot of the controversies of modern day reformed folks. I find him to be a great read of great edification myself. So those are several of my um, reformed systematic theologies, not all of them. I have a few more up on the shelf, but those would be the ones that I wanted to tell you about today. And if I had to pick one, I would probably say, go ahead and get Lewis Burkhoff, Systematic Theology. The blue book, you cannot really go wrong there. It's uh, Each section is relatively compact, um, not terribly wordy. Sentences are pretty short, punctiliar, readable, it points you to the right stuff and where it's found in the scripture. So that's what a Systematic Theology is for. Uh, but if you haven't read Calvin, maybe it's time to do that. All right, well, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for checking in little tour of my library. Love you lots. Talk to you later.